Welcome to Victory, the podcast, special edition Rams victory. We're lucky enough to get Robert Woods here. Uh, local Gardenia and uh, USC grad. California so, kid. Yep. Yeah. So how you doing, man? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Uh, uh, thanks for having a local kid on the show. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's incredible. That must be, how great is that to like, did you grow up? We, I mean, obviously the Rams have been gone back, so you may not have missed were, were you a fan of the Rams growing up? I was, you know, the greatest show on turf. Always watched them. Uh, Isaac Bruce, Torrey Holt doing their thing, Marshall Falk. I uh, was really excited just as a football player being um, from L.A. for the Rams to come back to L.A. Um, and then for me to sign with them, uh, on top of that, it was just a dream come true to be able to play here uh, for the home team and uh, do what I've been doing right here in, the, in front of everybody. Yeah, I mean, how great is it have this new amazing stadium, which, by the way, I kind of predicted it on Entourage years before it happened. But uh, how is it to be like have a great team going and being in this amazing stadium? That's got to be a good, good thing. Yeah, it's really like a whole shift and change, you know, coming here, uh, coming here with Sean McVay, uh, new staff. As you can see, we switched up our, our logos, our, our colors, our uniform, um, have SoFi Stadium, just a whole new look to come back here in L.A. and really just kind of like flip the script, you know, come and be a top team, always being a contender and uh, really just trying to get this championship back here in L.A. where it belongs. Hey, Robert, do you think I look like Sean McVay at all? <laughs> he wants to so badly. I, I, on, on social media, people tell me I look like Sean McVay. I don't think so. I think if I bulked up a little bit, I could maybe play him in the movie. Some people tell hey. me I'm built like Robert Wood, but I don't see it. I, don't I, I do know you do have to get in the weight room. He's pretty, he's pretty jacked up. <laughs> he's pretty jacked. I will give him that. He's pretty jacked. So, Robert, question for you. So, obviously, anytime you get drafted in the NFL, it, it's a great thing. It doesn't matter where. But as a kid from California... You get drafted by Buffalo. Had you now? We're from New York, so we know what what cold is. But were you thinking like, oh my goodness, you know what? What am I gonna do? Yeah, I just remember uh, my my that first call, um, getting drafted, <laughs> uh, talking to the teams, and then kind of just thinking like, okay, you know, Buffalo, New York. I'm a California I, I know kid. it's gonna be cold. Yeah, I'm like, okay, <laughs> probably 30 minutes from New York, New York City. Um, just being right there. And then actually going out to Buffalo, looking out the window, um, seeing seeing what it was all about. But uh, definitely cold, definitely freezing temperatures. <laughs> um, went through, well, it all, went through it a all storm worked out, when I was but, there, but it was it's but, been great. But, but Robert, when I mean, obviously, you're like USC, you're projected top five, top ten at least, and then that year didn't go as planned, and you dropped a little. Now it's years later and you've, you know, I don't know, 75, to be. 75 million in contracts or whatever the numbers are. <laughs> but, Doug. but was that a motivating factor? Did you, was the draft a disappointment for you? Yeah, I wouldn't say it was a, a disappointment, but I would say it's one of, it wasn't, I mean, it's one of the things, obviously you're pleased to get drafted. Um, I knew I could sneak in that late first round, um, end up going early second, but uh, you always know the receivers and the players taking ahead of you. Um, my goal still to this day is to outlast everybody I was I was drafted with. But uh, you definitely know it. Um, you know who's in your class. And um, just you just happy to get in the league at that point. You're happy to be somewhere right. and the team won you. And, and what what's the real thing to outlast people besides obviously working hard? Are you, I mean, you Take know, we've care had, of your body. We've had a couple. Well, I'd like sure. to hear him say sure. it. Since he's lasted and longer Sean than Sean McVay, but, um, take care of our bodies. <laughs> but, uh, but I mean, uh, we had a couple of your teammates on and everybody, we had DK Metcalf on our show also. Everybody nowadays seems, I don't know if it's the party line or what. It's just like, you know, we really, we come home, we watch TV, we're not here to party. Is there any fun going on in the NFL anymore? <laughs> yeah, I, I would say I would say so. It's been, it's been, been a while uh, with, with COVID going on. Everything's been limited. Guys have been trying to really, um, we say, keep, keep our environment safe, keep everything in the house. But, uh, I mean, it, it's, still, it's still the NFL. You still have your fun. You still get the treatment. Um, being here in LA, uh, you have your perks, you have your bonuses. Um, I would say it's, it's no better place than play football here in LA, having the perks, the restaurants, Hollywood, entourage, um, having experiences <laughs> and, like and this. winning helps too, right? <laughs> being on a winning team is of, always of nice. Of course, right? of course. Keep winning. But, but, stacking but them up. since Robert brought up entourage, because I'm always like, does anyone even know who we are? You guys are younger and stuff. So you he you have seen the show. the show. Went off yeah, there. seen the show, uh, seen you guys movie. Um, nice. Been, been following you guys. Uh, huge fans. Oh, good. I we're, appreciate we're, that. We're big fans, too. And all right, I have to ask this question. And I already know the answer. But how <laughs> annoying 
is the fantasy football thing. And are you aware of your fantasy score and how annoying? I mean, look, you love your fans, right? But but I, mean, I don't, I don't I even know. know I don't even know if I, I want to address myself. it because it's already so bad. If I, <laughs> I mean, you, it's, it's crazy. I mean, it's it's clearly you see that people aren't watching the games. They're literally <laughs> just checking their team or checking stats and not knowing what's going on. And you get these crazy messages, whether it's right. pregame, after right. the game. Are you playing? Are you? Yeah. Healthy? Are you playing? <laughs> my, I'm betting my whole house on this. Please, <laughs> please, wants to please be Adam pay Shepard my tuition. <laughs> You're yeah, literally people, getting it all. Yeah, people take this fantasy thing so seriously. They 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 feel like they know you, right? Like you're part, you know, and it's it's but are you aware of whether you hear it or you see it on Twitter? Do you know what you threw up on the fantasy scoreboard at the end of a weekend? I I, like I do. I, the fans let me know, but one thing I don't know is how the points are are tallied. I just know the fans let me know when I have a big one or if I came through for them. <laughs> but uh <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know when the, when the big games come, and they, they definitely love it. Get get tons of messages and uh, tons of responses. And Robert, so how did things change? Obviously, Jared was a great quarterback, and and Matthew is now playing great. But how how much changes for a receiver? Obviously, the way he throws the ball, but just chemistry and personalities. Does that make a big difference in in how you approach it every day? Yeah, I would say just his leadership and experience um, is one of the huge. Uh, Differences or takeoffs from from Stafford and, and golf, just his experience being able to be out there and knowing the defenses or knowing just certain looks, he's able to just communicate uh, sometimes with a finger or eyes, you know, something that he's expecting. We're on the same page, but just making different reads, making some different changes um, in our offense, putting guys on different routes. I think him and McVay are a great combination, um, but really just the experience and him being able to be, have those reps uh in games um i think that's that's the huge difference right now is there ever any small talk in the huddle <laughs> i'm serious we, like, we, think about what we're doing later or what? well not necessarily <laughs> but i mean you know these guys know no, each I'm, other right? is there is it all like <laughs> screaming in like numbers and routes or is there a little little chit chat ever uh if if anybody uh is doing the chit chat <laughs> kind of breaking it up it's either myself uh tyler higby <laughs> Or Brian Allen, um, I think a lot of the guys are, are so locked in and focused in on the task, and you feel it all game um, throughout. And sometimes you may hear a guy just kind of break up the focus, just like, hey, guys, no, relax. You know, we're doing well. Just to crack right. a smile and just, you know, refresh and, like, get back at it. But there's definitely times right. where there's, there's small talk and get guys, you know, to laugh, <laughs> crack a smile, and just remember we're out here having fun. What about Andrew Whitworth? We had him on the podcast. He's he obviously a very large. He is a freaking monster with his golf swing. Looks like as good as anybody. I didn't even <laughs> want to take a picture with him because I was embarrassed. I really was. I was like, I don't want to take a picture but with this guy. How's his demeanor? He seems like the nicest guy in the world, but I got to believe he's, he's, he's just a large man, Yeah, but he's not. Move. I can't. Move. <laughs> I can't. Uh, we'll like it out. We'll he's not it messing he's around. Not effing around out there. Yeah, no, nah, he's definitely not. He's our he's our anchor. He's our our, our grandfather captain out there. He's the one who's, who's <laughs> locking us in, uh, letting us know if we got to pick up our tempo. You know, keep keep staying on our necks. Um, we need to score on this drive. He's kind of the one who's keeping that keeping that engine going. He's he's adding that that coal to our train, uh, keeping us fueled up. Um, and you know, when you see that fist pump, we talk about Wits fist pump. When we see Wits fist pump, you know, we're doing something right. We're executing our plays. Nice. Nice. Do you? I'm, I'm the guy that asks the dumb questions. Do you like being mic'd up? <laughs> I actually, I feel right. like I kind of, I kind of have right? to mon. I feel like I monitor myself when I when I am mic'd up. You know, you just gotta be careful what you what you put out there and what's out right. there. But I feel like when do you I'm, get kill power? Can you say? Can you cut out the part where I was cursing and I told that guy he sucked? I mean, can you? Can, or do they just take it? They they just it? they just take it out wow. when you when you watch the copy, you're like, wow, they really kept a lot out of there. But <laughs> I mean, it's it's a lot of cursing, there's a lot of trash talking. I bet. Um, it gets intense, especially I, I like going against guys who, who who talk back. You know that adds more competitive so, juices to us. So who is that? Cause I know Jalen Ramsey has got to be one of those guys. I don't know in practice who talks a lot, I would think, but who's who two things. Who do you not, who are you not thrilled to line up against? And who's got the biggest mouth out of all of them? Uh, I'm thrilled to line up against them all. Um, that's like one that is Jalen. We always want to go against the best one, the best competitor. We think it's Jalen. 
um, best lockdown corner in the league. But honestly, the other trash talker, I, I, I had some good ones. Um, happened to be teammates before. And uh, <laughs> that's Aqib Tlaib and Marcus Peters. Uh, we go against Marcus Peters with the Ravens um, two years ago. And boy, he was talking. That was his first game back too, playing the Rams. But uh, he's one Does of he the get ones personal. <laughs> like, what kind of stuff is he saying? I mean, it's, just, it's 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 it all. You know, it's whether it's stuff, like your right? your routes are trash. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've, I've been locking you up at practice. Uh, we've been doing this since college. But literally, you you get it all. You want to just enjoy the moment, stay in it, and uh, it really brings the best out of players. You know, you bring. bring so, your but it, are they? Is he like when he's saying that to you? Your 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 routes are trash. Is he being half funny, or he is just like he's locked in to in try head. to get in your head? Let me let me ask. <laughs> I mean, is that like you know? Is he really thinking he's going to get to you like that? And does anyone ever get under your skin to the point that you you know just can't? So I remember back. my my first time um, hearing Marcus Peters trash talk me. Um, he was with the Chiefs, and I had like a, a just a clear out route. I was running a route, clear, getting somebody open, open in Buffalo, and he's like, "Man, that route is trash. Like that's weak." And that's when I realized, I'm like, "Okay, you're just talking," because now it's like the guy behind me is running wide open, you know, getting the ball. <laughs> but it's just like he he's always has to say something, um, and once you acknowledge it or you give him eye contact, that's when he he keeps going. And if it bothers <laughs> you, uh, it's even worse. You know, it, it adds fuel to the fire. I love you know, it. when we had DK Metcalf on the podcast, we we asked him who, you know, what defensive back, and we didn't even get the question out of our mouths before he was like Jalen Ramsey. Jalen Ramsey, no yeah. question about it. What is it that Jalen Ramsey does aside from being great? Is he is he a trash talker? Is he just stare you down like uh, you know, like a Rocky I, movie? I think it's it's it all. It's his whole presence, his demeanor, um, straight straight baller. I I can go back to his. He, he lines up against the best receivers every single time, but I'll go back to his first week here, um, and you see it was us against Atlanta. He had the one-on-one matchup against Julio Jones. Our whole team is like, all right, we got Jalen Ramsey on our team. We locked in. Everybody's watching. Like, what it's you going to awesome. bring? And I think you just see him just being competitive, going up there and making guys, whether it's drop passes or, or incomplete passes, and he's, he's excited about it. He, he's letting himself know I'm, I'm the best corner. Receivers are, are looking at him, seeing him flex, seeing him run down, you know, waving his finger. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, you got to take offense to it. You know, you, you take pride in craft. You get in lockdown. Someone's show buddy up, ex- exciting. Uh, you don't want those plays to be made on you. And uh, Jalen continues to and continues to make these plays. I love it. So another thing we asked DK Metcalf, <laughs> I want to ask you. Connolly fancies himself for an middle-aged man to be pretty speedy what so we asked dk what yard line could Connolly start on that he could take him down what if do you I think started what? on the 50 <laughs> and you started on the goal line could you catch me before i made it to the end zone <laughs> i mean i'm 47 i, I, with I a would, plate I, in my ankle. I would hope not <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that would be really slow. <laughs> that would so be that would be really, really slow. <laughs> if you, if you get caught, you might you, you might not be able to run anymore. You might just have to say you go walking on Saturday mornings. That, <laughs> that that's, it. that's it. Well, you know, Robert, that's you know, amazing. we we had Russell Wilson on in, in the movie, and he overthrew yes. Connolly, who dove for a pass and broke his I leg. Broke and, my leg. But so he Russell might have been Wilson able to start at the forty ten years ago before that accident <laughs> happened. But and so outside of football, Robert, we're like, what what are you watching? Since we're TV guys, you watching any shows that you're into when you're traveling on the Squid road? Squid Games. Oh yes, I uh, watch Squid Games. I know everybody's probably attached to Squid Games right now, hooked to it. Um, that one d- drew me in um, from episode one, the red light, green right. light, uh, was, was, <laughs> was attached to it. Crazy yeah. ending. I, I just saw LeBron say, get on the plane, dude. Where do you, let me not spoil it, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a great show, great concept. Um, look more for, for more shows and more interesting ideas. That's, that's really different and extraordinary. All yeah. right, I got I got a question. What this is my last dumb question I'm going to ask. How many how often do you guys practice trick plays? And by trick plays I mean unconventional plays where you go I don't know if you saw the thing that the Chiefs did where like yeah. every everybody on offense at a certain point lined up under center and you think how often do you <laughs> practice that? And at what point are you confident enough in such a wild kind of trick play? How often do you do you run Yeah, that I w- I would say we we try it out for weeks and weeks uh Really? 
Yeah, I remember we had a we had a good one in a few few years ago. We kind of practiced that one from early on in the season. Didn't run it to about week nine or ten. And uh, I mean, you got to you got to make sure it works. You you know, yeah. Pass the well, ball so how did it go? People, you can't. It's either what it's, it's either going to work or it's not. It's going to fail. Uh, and are you excited or, when that play comes in? Are you like, all right, let's go? Or are you kind of nervous? Like, well, okay. We oh, no, no you're, you're waiting on that call. That's the one that you've been, like you say, you've been working on, you've been practicing. You finally get that call. Everybody's excited. You might see some smiles as people line up and take their Well, position. that's what I was going to say. Your <laughs> acting skills have to kick in at that point because you can't let every, you know, you can't let the, the, the defense know that you got a trick play coming. So everybody's got to keep a straight face. I think that's so funny. <laughs> How did that play go when you did it in week nine? Uh, it, it went well. We actually, we, we did a, a, a spin off of that. We had a, a touchdown in London. We threw it to Cooper Cup. Um, it was kind of like a double reverse toss back pass. Um, yeah, it ended up, ended up being a touchdown. And that was kind of a spin off of another trick play that was a double reverse to myself. Um, got all the way down to, to the goal line. But uh, those plays, I mean, they they're, our coaches, Probably thinking of plays right now. He's always thinking of something. <laughs> but uh, when those That's plays awesome. are successful, um, you just keep keep building off of it. That's great. That's well, great. it seems like the team's in a good place. Everybody's ev- locked in. Everybody really does feel focused. And all the, I don't know, everyone we've spoken to, they just, you guys seem so nice. It just seems <laughs> like it's not North Dallas 40, if you know that movie. I don't know if you've ever seen it. But I, I, I don't. I, w- I don't. And you should check out Heaven Can Wait, which is a great movie where the Rams the do Rams. go to the Super Bowl. And that was what... <laughs> One of the movies that made me a Rams fan when I was a kid. So we wish you the best of luck this year. Everything looks great. And uh, hopefully everyone stays healthy and uh, bring us Super Bowl back to the Rams since I know the Giants aren't winning it. So <laughs> thank you very much. I appreciate Thanks it. Thanks so much for Robert. having me. Right, and uh, hopefully that's the movie of the year for us this year. That's it. I love right. it. Be good. All right. Thank you guys. That's it. That's it. Right, Rams victory. The podcast. 